Time is 8.39, and for young men, not only looking for adventure, but looking for maybe career options and or things to do. Sometimes we're not sure, or young women, I should say also, uh, sometimes we're not sure what we want to do when we get out of high school. And there is our gaps to be bridged so that you at least have some sort of direction. U.S. Air Force is a viable option uh, with military, with benefits that come with it as well. Here to talk about it from the recruiting office, Sergeant Summer. Good morning, Sergeant. Good morning, George. How are you doing? I am doing great. Now, you've been on before. We talked about uh, uh, some of the opportunities involved in the Air Force Mm -hmm. and uh, plenty of different career options, uh, almost, you name it. You, you've got it. Almost. 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 And that's something that obviously uh, you can talk about with Sergeant Summer at the uh, Air Force Recruiting Office. But I want to talk a little bit because a lot of people don't realize you think you just go in as, a, as what's going to be pay grade of E1 starting at the bottom. But you can, there are actually things you can do to go in at a slightly higher pay grade of an E2 or above. So you tell me a little bit about that and maybe what, what people can expect if they want to go in and, and with a little bit more rank. Yeah. Um, first things is... When we have our contract options, there's a four-year and the six-year option. And the six, if you choose the six-year option, um, that allows you to sew on the rank of E3 automatically uh, upon graduation of your technical training or uh, after completion of 20 weeks of it, whichever one comes first. Okay. That's, that's the traditional route for those that don't have college credits. Uh, the other route is uh, if you have 20 credits or at least 20 credits of uh, college, that would get you the rank of E2. And if you have over 45 college credits, that would get you the rank of E3 right. coming straight in. And you're earning that pay the day one of your basic training. Right. And that's important not only from a, from a pay-earning perspective, but also from a rank perspective in, in moving forward that you're, right. you're kind of jumping ahead a little bit. And especially if you're excelling in your field, that you have uh, opportunities available perhaps a little bit quicker, which is, is even if you're not sure if you're planning to stay in as a, a, as a full-time all going career all the way after your four or six years, even still, you want to have as much on your side as possible for uh, if and when you decide to exit, because it all looks good on a right. resume. Exactly. And speaking of exit, you're saying you're, we, we were talking off the air about about getting people who maybe aren't sure they had left the service and maybe deciding to come back in. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe, and, and I know it's like we were talking about this, and I got out of the Army, I, I wanted to get, I was ready to go, but once I got out, I wasn't sure what to do with myself, and it was a real hard transition for me, and there were times that I thought, hmm, I ended up not doing it, but I can understand where people come from, because you do have a certain set of guidelines that, that are available to you when you're in the service, plus the opportunities that maybe you realize you aren't, aren't as available to you on when you have exited. So mm-hmm. tell me a little bit about that strategy and, and what people can expect if they want to maybe rejoin the service. How difficult is it? Uh, if they want to rejoin the service, uh, it's really not that difficult. I mean, as long as your reenlistment eligibility is, is within a certain code, um, which they can find on their discharge paperwork, um, you know, some things are waiverable depending on, you know, your specific story, your situation on, as to why you separated. Um, but really, it's, it's, it's through my office. Um, you get a, there's a separate job list that they get selected for. Um, it is a little bit of a longer process just because of all the paperwork that has to be done, transferring information, all that kind of stuff. Um, so you could probably look, I'd say maybe anywhere between you know six to twelve months waiting time before you would actually find out when you'd actually be going full active duty again. And that's not just for prior service people that get out, of, you know, get out. This is this is also for people serving in the reserves or the guard. They can come in active duty as well. Right and. Uh are there any particular careers that you're looking for for prior service, or is it just anyone that... Uh... Right now, the uh, big push is for uh, the special forces, um, but also mechanical and electrical career fields. Those are the ones that we're always trying to fill, no matter, no matter if it's prior service or if it's, uh, you know kids out of high school. Right. And the thing about prior service, they don't have to go back through the basic training process right. or anything like that. They're just right. going back into their field. And they just go straight know. into, uh, they, just, they just take a two-week Air Force familiarization course and so back out into full force. How to, how to get to put your uniform on and yeah. who you salute, all that good stuff. I want to talk a little bit, though, and, and we could just kind of touch on this uh, with with people who decide they don't want to go in as enlisted uh, personnel, they want to go in as officers. Mm-hmm. And I, not necessarily the eligibility, but the, what, what were the first steps they could take to find out if, if they're even eligible or what they can do? The first steps they can take is um, they can get my office a call. Um, I can pre-qualify them. Um, the basic qualifications, just I mean, as long as you have a bachelor's degree and you're within the age range, which the, max, the maximum age you could be would be 35. Right. Um, 
But then from that point, once I, you know, once you, I determine that you're pre-qualified, I'll just forward it on up to the, uh, the line officer recruiting, um, in which that case they'll take it from there. So either way, it starts with you as a, on the qualification basis. The Sergeant Summer Air Force recruiter, where can people go to talk to you about, uh, careers in the Air Force? Uh, you can stop by my office. I'm located at the Town Center Mall, uh, 24201 Suite 100. Um, it's outside the, the mall. Uh, across the parking lot from Chick-fil-A, and you'll see all the other services as well there. Perfect. And who, what's the number they can call? Uh, phone number is 661-255-5484. We consider it a career in the Air Force. Thanks so much for stopping by, Sergeant. Right, really, thanks, uh, Good luck in your, in your pursuits. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Time is 845. Back to traffic after this.